out of Philadelphia that was known around the country, and that's rare where a city mayor from Especially one area... that time. That, you're right. That um, time. Where I, they knew them all around the country. Icon's a really good word, and it's, it's, uh, it's true. There's a disturbing uh, lack of video, uh, of non-controversial Frank Rizzo video, you know, <laughs> because if... If you think of it, you can only think of, you know, five clips or so, you know, and it's usually confronting someone. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. and there was a whole other side to him. He wasn't always like that. And, um, you know, he was a large in life person. And I, I, I had a connection with him through my family and uh, went on bo both sides, but didn't always around the dinner table, didn't always agree with everything he did. But agreed with his reasoning much of the time for doing things. And sometimes you have to be unpopular. Sometimes, you know, you, you, that's what you are. Maybe you're the unpopular populace. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I the think unpopulous. political correctness. <laughs> he didn't sugarcoat everything. And he wasn't worried about being political, politically correct. And that's the same way with Trump. They say what they speak from the heart. And far too often with these elected officials, they spew out the same old rhetoric over and over again. Uh, all they are are talk, no action. And these guys, um, there was no doubt where they stood. And uh, Oh, yeah. And I, I do like that. I just don't like the, the amplifier of social media under Trump. Mm -hmm. I just think that you, you, there's got to be a filter in there if you're coming from that building out to the world. You've got to have something. You can't. You, you can't wake up in the middle of the night uh, because the brisket is sitting right and declare war on Cincinnati. You know, it's got to go through the officer. I just think there's too much. Um, we all have the ability to, to have too loud of a voice now, I think. And it's not it's not um, it's not filtered enough because everybody thinks they have something important to say. Everybody thinks that you want to see what their lunch was on Facebook or the pretty cat video or whatever and they, and it's we're not made as human beings to absorb this much information mm -hmm. and it's dulling us to things and we're getting desensitized in a weird way just like my my uh pet peeve this year has been I've gotten so many phone calls from just Absolute waste of time, solicitations, things of that nature. I avoid my phone more than I pick it up, and it's rendering it useless to me. Mm -hmm. You know, and they they talk about, well, you have to, uh, you can uh, opt out, and that works somewhat, but not a lot. And my thing is, why don't we have a system where people opt in to calling us? You know, so you give your number out to the people. Anybody else? calls and they get like there's one thing i have uh where you call and all it does it's really great it just says a random number and you have to enter the number to have the call go through and that gets rid of a lot of these automated things and they go down to systems where you can pay a monthly fee and i would not do it but it was hilarious i thought about doing it where they have something where you hit the button and it goes over to some uh, an ai thing with an actual voice and it keeps the person on the phone and it was just it kept – there's a audio thing where it kept this solicitor on the phone for 15 minutes and he was just talking to a recording. And it was great because they – some people feel it's not enough to keep them to hang up. you got to tie them up so they're not bothering somebody else. Right. But I, I think that the technology is an amplifier just – because once you say something, you can't take it back. Yeah. You know, it's 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 got to be tough because you, you – maybe not you, but maybe the next generation – Oh, I see when I visit elementary schools and things like that amongst the younger generation, um, some of them, as they get older, not necessarily elementary age, but as they develop into a young adult, uh, they have difficulty keeping a conversation with someone face to face. They lack the communication skills. Yeah. Um, everything's on their phone and they'll text their friend who's five feet away from them. Years ago, they didn't have that, obviously, and people had to actually communicate with each other directly. And uh, that's lacking now in society, and I don't think it's for the better. I no. think, you know, technology does amazing things, and we've come a long way with it, for sure. But on the other side, it's a negative in the sense that we rely so heavily on it, we, um, we lack 
we underperform in basic areas such as communication skills. Well, it's supposed to augment our skills, not replace them. And that's what people don't understand. Mm -hmm. And I just don't, I don't get that because I see it's manifesting itself in many people as almost a form of, it's changing the way we communicate. We're not changing it like ergonomically. It's changing us biologically because it's changing people are there's a brevity in conversation now that's come from typing they're using less words in actual conversation there's a flatness in affect where people don't show emotions because you can't see emotions over this thing there's this head down talking to people where and i and i told you in the last segment the impact the positive impact my parents had on me growing up it's from talking and it definitely is. And whenever we, if it was a family party where my cousins and aunts and uncles were there, when we walked into that house, as we approached that house, they reminded my brother and myself and my sister, you say hello to every adult and well, cousins too, but everyone in there, you shake their hand firmly. You don't give them a wishy-washy handshake. Uh, if they ask you how's school going, you hold a conversation with them. You don't give them yes or no answers. And I see it far off. Far too often, I talk to a young person and I say, how's school? Good. <laughs> Playing baseball? Yes. They can't carry a conversation. It's one word answers. Where they told us at a young age how important it is to be able to have a conversation. And now, as someone that holds a public office, I'm glad they did that because I constantly have to interact with members of the public on a daily basis and introduce myself to complete strangers. And uh, those skills that I learned as a child, because of my parents, uh, made a big positive impact. And I'm so any of the listeners out there with uh, young children, make sure you teach them the importance of uh, holding a conversation, making eye contact, and being able to communicate. Yeah, just putting that thing down. Uh, I, I've seen children when they are forced to put it down, they go to sleep. It's like they just don't know how to exist in this world. And that's not going to help them as they uh, grow up. Yeah. You know, um, how many handshakes do you think you do in a year? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot. Um, you know, just uh, I saw you at a fall festival a couple weeks ago, but um, in October, there's a lot of community days and fall fests at the 62 municipalities that make up Montgomery County. And I enjoy going out in the public and meeting members of the community and introducing myself to constituents I don't know and shake a lot of hands in the process. Uh, but that's the best part of my job. I meet thousands of people during this process holding this position and um, uh, to be a voice for people that I meet and is uh, special to me. I, I see. I couldn't I, I couldn't do your job for the simple reason I could not shake hands. I would not get elected. I just don't want to shake everybody's hand. Yeah, I, I'm not a germaphobe, but I get weird, you know. <laughs> there's some people that probably that they follow my social media every day. I update my Facebook. It's uh, Vote Joe Gale is my page. And they see I'm here, I'm there, I'm at this event, that event. Uh, not political events, it's community events out amongst the people. Um, probably there's people that think, geez, I could, couldn't bother with this you know it is a tremendous time commitment it's a lot of time away from my family uh i'm not at the, i'm not at the stage in my life where i have a family of my own yet god willing one day i will but um i wanted to do this because i realized the big impact it has on my schedule evenings weekends nonstop. while i was young um because i had the time to do it but it's definitely a uh a big commitment. What do you mean, God willing, you will? You talk like you're about to die, you're a, or you're a gargoyle, or they're going to make it illegal soon. <laughs> God, God willing. willing, one day I get married, day, have, uh, married. <laughs> children and a family of my own. Yeah. I want to make sure that I spend quality time with my family. I don't want to be an absentee father that's always out um, at functions. I want to be part of their lives and... Um, the family unit's very important to me, and being part of it is important as well. Maybe you start with a pet. I have a pet. What do you got? I have a little Yorkie poo, half Yorkie, half poodle. Her name is Jelly Bean. I got her from the SPCA in Conshohocken. That was her name when I got her. She was a puppy, and um, you brings me, a lot of joy to my life. Well, you telling me that was her name when you got it just cut out a whole line of questions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why I put it out there. Okay, that's good. That's yeah. good. That's uh, that you covered that. So... You, 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 
See, I don't you ever aren't you ever shaking hands and you see somebody like four down the line? It's like, I'm just like ah. yeah. Well, the trick is you have to wash your hands a lot um, because you know you're interacting with all these people. Like you said, you don't know if they just wipe their nose or whatever. Maybe I mean, you ever you're get like monk it. and you're yelling, "Wipe to this guy! Wipe! <laughs> wipe! Wipe!" <laughs> uh, no, I just make sure that every chance I can, I wash my hands, and um, you know you have to take care of yourself too. And as um, somebody in the public eye i try to look the part as far as staying well groomed and um not being a sloppy uh public official um i see that i see elected officials where i think my gosh how did they ever get into office and do they realize how sloppy they look and ridiculous um i try to be presentable and uh you know i think that goes a long way when you meet a random person and shake their hand yeah yeah. The now, when you were running for office, this is one of our hard hitting questions that got developed over the years, uh, and it actually came up accidentally. It's become quite interesting. Is what percentage of the you went door to door, right? I did do a lot of door to door. Yeah. What percentage of the population that you encountered would you say were not appropriately garbed for opening their door? <laughs> <laughs> I have some interesting stories <laughs> related to that. This is something that nobody ever brings up when talking to politicians. I came up once accidentally, and like I've learned that this community is forty percent boxer brief, forty percent tidy, <laughs> uh, tidy whities, and twenty percent. I'll say whatever. this: there's been occasions where I knock on a door, and I'm surprised somebody answered it the way they were. Right. <laughs> they could have just not answered the door, but. We live in a strange world, I guess. I right? guess they wanted to see some Joe Gale really bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't understand it. I, doing stuff on the ambulance and stuff, you, you see people doing emergencies and they have no control over I it. I bet. But then you just see people that don't care. You know, they don't care. It's one thing if you had something medical happen or it's middle of night or again, you know, it's, we get whatever we give, but then when, when somebody walks out and says, oh, what's going on? It's like, you could put pants on. <laughs> this person's in the middle of an incident. No excuse. You, there's yeah. no excuse, you know, grab something. Yep. But I just, I just thought, you know, as politicians, you know, um, you're going to the door and you're serious with your message and then <laughs> the unexpected, the unexpected. And it's never that attractive. Unexpected. They talk about on shows and stuff. It's, <laughs> it's yeah. not that the, uh, so when you, when you start doing this today, they, they don't give you like big scissors and a gold shovel. Do they? There's none. Of that. Oh, I've had my share of big scissors and the gold shovels for the groundbreakings. And do you, do you, did they let you keep the big scissors? No, no. They have that on, in storage, and they pull it out for the big events. Uh, these marketing firms, I think, sometimes have them. But I thought you guys, when you started, you got your package, you got your ID and your parking thing and your big scissors and your gold shovel. No, I was just at a new business that opened in uh, Horsham Township, and they had the big scissors. And when there's a road project, they always have the shovel and the pile of dirt. And have you ever got to do the big scissors? I have. Got what, pretty good at what it. What was that like? Actually, it's funny. Um <laughs> I was at the Montgomery County Coaches Hall of Fame. Um, their unveiling of their new location, which is now at the Health and Sciences Center at the Montgomery County Community College. And they had a ribbon with the big scissors. Yeah. They couldn't cut the ribbon. The scissors are dull, aren't It was they? too dull. Yeah. So everybody got a big laugh out of that. That was a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I saw, I saw it fail. But that's why I think you would want your own big scissors <laughs> so you can make sure they were sharpened, <laughs> you know? And the, like and, oversized kindergarten scissors. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, they should be sharp but safe. You shouldn't run with the big scissors. <laughs> the openings. The uh, scooter with scissors. Um, what do you do for fun? Um, I like spending time with my dog. Uh, she likes to walk, so... You're putting a lot of pressure on Jelly Bean. Yeah, I'm I just, do. I'm just saying. The highlight of her day is going for a walk, so I make sure every day I take her for a walk, and it clears my head and gets me some fresh air. Um, I also enjoy landscaping. I love being out in the yard and doing yard work. Um, I think it's it's nice because you could see the progress you're making with a project outside, and you're out in the fresh air, in the sun, and it's something I've always enjoyed. And um, also, my family has a home in New Jersey at the shore, and I like boating and fishing and being okay. in the water. So when I do have a free time, which is rare in my schedule, I like... Um, Spending time with my family and being at the shore. Where do you live at up here? Plymouth Township. Okay. Yep. Okay. The uh, 
and how how long the, the, your family's from up here, so they they're still up here and they have a place at the shore. Yes, the. Uh,